Okay, let's do some IB questions. Are they same? Question A, so this is some scientific notation. So question A, find A over B. Okay, now they give us that A is 6 multiply 10 to the power of negative 5. And 2 is simply, or, or B is 2 multiply 10 to the power of 4. Now we can simplify this. Well, we can divide 2 with 6. That gives me 3 above the parentheses, uh, above the fraction, excuse me, as the numerator. And I'm going to take this from top to bottom. So this gives me 10 to the power of 4 multiplied 10 to the power of 5. So I have 3 over 10 to the power of 9. And if we want to write this um, without scientific notations, that's going to give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this would be my final answer. Let's move over to B. Well, B says 2 multiply 6 times 10 to the power of negative 5 multiply 2 times or plus, excuse me, plus 2 multiply 10 to the power of 4. Now for this type of equation, I can write this. I can write this as, um, let's go 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I can add this to 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have, what's that? That's 20,000 and 0 0.0006. Then I can take my 2 distributed into the parentheses. 2 times 20,000 is 40,000. And 2 multiplied 0 0.0006 is 0 0.0012. Why? Because 2 times 6 is 12. The 1 distributes over. That gives me 0 0.00012. Okay, cool. Let's do C. So C says A. It's going to be quite a long one. Well, for, <clears throat> for this equation, you can... You're allowed to use your graphic display calculator, but it's very important that you multiply correctly on your calculator. So you'll see the mark scheme, it will be around one mark for, for this type of question. So let let me evaluate that one on my calculator. Um, so I want to then say plus 2 multiply 10 to the power, uh, multiply 10 to the power 4. Um, and we're going to raise this to the second power. So I get this answer. Uh, this question is outrageous though. Uh, how many nines are that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven nines. Four, five, six, seven, one times 10 to the power of negative 13. So we are allowed to evaluate this on our graphic display calculator. But yeah, let's move on. Euros in an account with a nominal interest rate of 6.6 .6 per annum compounded yearly. Find the value after 12 years, okay. Compounded interest, so we're going to use the following formula. The future value is equal to the present value one plus R over 100 K, K being the term, K, and N being the amount of years. We need the future value, but we have the present value. So the present value is 7,000, one plus 6.6 .6 over 100 uh, K. It says yearly, which means one, and we have a time frame of 12, and we're going to multiply this by 1. So let's see how much money Carl, Carl has after 12 years. So on my calculator, I type 7,000, 1 plus 6.6 .6 over 100. And we're going to raise this to the 12th power. So my answer would then be, so Carl will have 15,072.47 euros. Okay. So that's for question A. What about B? Well, B says determine the amount Carl would need to invest at the same nominal rate if he wants to have the same amount in eight years. Hmm. Okay, well, now our future value is already given because we want the same amount, so the future value stays the same. Um, we currently don't have the present value, so I need to calculate the present value. So I can say one... Uh, 0.066. The reason I do this is because I simplified to by dividing by 100. So the decimal moves two slots to the right. So that's 0 0.066. We're going to raise this to the eighth power now because 
Why? Why are we raising it to the 8th power? Because now we want the amount in 8 years. So now I'm going to divide both sides by my coefficient of my or, or my coefficient of my my present value. So I then get 15,072.47. I'm going to divide this by 1.066 raised to the 8th power to find my present value. So my present value will be what? Let's see. Jumping over to my calculator, 0 0.47, 1.066 raised to the 8th. So I get an answer of 9,031.13 cents, or in this case, euros. Okay, so we need we need 9,039 dollars point, ah, euros, point 13 uh, sent to to invest into our account with the interest rate of 6.6 percent and that should give me the value after i found after 12 years determine the sequence of the 79th value so first things first we're going to find um we're going to find the rule so the un says the rules un u1 plus n minus 1 d so let's first calculate the rule before we can find a value so first term is 3 n and in this case we don't know what n is and the difference well I can see from 4 to 7 that's 4 constant difference of 4 that gives me 3 plus 4 n minus 4 so that gives me my rule then my un rule would be 4 n minus 1 so let's go find out now I know that the sequence uh, determine which term in the, the sequence has a value. So now we know that un is equal to 79. I can then say 4n minus 1. 4 transfers over. That gives me 80 is equal to 4n. And therefore, um, n is equal to 20. So there's my final answer. What about b? Hmm. Find the sum of the first 20 terms of the sequence. Okay, find the sum of the first 10, 20 terms. Well, now I want to, the sum of an arithmetic sequence is n over 2 u1 plus un over, oh no, so just that. Um, okay, so n in this case is 20. So 20 divided by 2 is 10, u1 is 3, plus un, so I need to find u20. So let's quickly find u20 over here. That gives me four times 20 minus one. And anyway, 79. So then we have 10 multiply 82. So the sum of the first 20 terms will be 820. Okay, so there's my final answer. Okay, to, to find c, so the sum of the first n terms is 280 determine the value of n well we cannot really use this formula at the moment because we don't have un we have the total sum but we don't have un so that's a bit of a problem so the formula we can in fact use for this one i will move over to this side for c well we can use this formula this is also an ib formula that's given so it's going to be n over 2 2 multiply u1 plus n minus 1 d so I just want to input my values. Well, we don't know what n is, right? So let me quickly input this value so I can shift over to the opposite side. 2 u1, 2, we have u1, u1 is 3, that's the first term, plus difference of 4, so it's going to be 4n, and then minus 4. Okay, let me move over to the side so we can solve. Okay, first things first, I'm going to cross multiply. If I cross multiply, I get 1640. And then on this case, we have n is equal to 6 plus 4n minus 2. Uh, let's see. Yeah, minus 4. So I can then simplify this to say 1640. 6n. Um, let's do this one first. Let's say that's going to give me 2n plus 4n squared. 
flip it over, bring it to the other side, set this equation equal to zero. I have four n squared plus two n plus one six four zero. Uh, that's supposed to be subtract, excuse me, minus one six four zero. I'm now now I'm going to factor with a factor with a four. So when I factor with a four, I have n squared plus mm, one half of n minus one four six divided by four. It gives me four hundred and ten. Well, okay. Well, now that I have this, I can use the quadratic equation. So in this case, I want to calculate so n sub one sub two. That's going to give me um, b squared. No negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Then I can say, well, negative b in this case is going to be negative 1 half plus minus the square root of um, 1 half squared minus, I'm going to move a bit to the side, 4a, a in this case is 1, C is negative 410, and I'm going to place this over 2a. So let's see what n's values are. So n sub 1, n sub 2, let's see what we find. I'm going to do n sub 1 and then n sub 2. One should be positive and one should be negative. If that's the case, we're obviously going to use our positive answer. Okay. Um, why? Because you cannot have a negative amount of sums in a geometric sequence. So let's square this up. Minus 4, 1, negative 410. In the calculator, I'm doing this. Okay, so my first answer is 20. Ah, oh, how can that be 20 again? Okay, so for n1, I get 20 if I use plus. So let's see what I get if I use minus. If I get minus, I get negative 41 over 2. Well, we're obviously not going to use this one because it's a negative value. Okay, let's move on to the next question. So they say calculate the area of triangle XYZ. Okay, so let's draw this. Always better to draw triangles. So let's give big X, small x. Let's give big Y, small y. Eight. Other way around, big Y, small y. And then big Z, small z. <coughs> okay, so they say X is equal to... 3.4 and y is equal to 2.6 angle z is equal to 7 79 okay so firstly we find the area well to find the area in this case i'm going to use the area of of a non-right triangle so that's the half of y x sine z that give me the half of 2.6 multiply 3.4 sine 79. If I do this, I type it on a calculator, one half. <coughs> sine 79. Very important when you type on a calculator. Um, very important to close the parentheses. Okay, so the area, the area is approximately a 3.4 or 4.34 okay so find angle x and angle z while well, angle z is already found hmm what a peculiar question but angle x ooh okay let's see let's see how we can find x hmm um well, I cannot use the law of sine because I don't have the value of z ooh this is going to be a long question oh Okay, is there any way I can do this? Okay, so I'm going to move a bit up. So to calculate B, the first things first, while well, we can't use the law of sine, right? We want to use the law of sine to find angles and we want to use the law of cosine to find sides. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find Z, okay? I'm going to find Z using the law of cosine. So it's going to be plus x squared minus 2yx uh, cos cosine z or cos z whichever one you want to say 
That's 2.6 squared plus um, 3.4 squared minus 2. Y is 2.6, 3.4. And then we have the cosine, 79. So Z is going to be equal to the square root of this equation. So let's find what, what, what the side of Z is. I'm going to type this again on the calculator. 2.6. <coughs> squared plus 3.4 squared minus 2, 2.6, 3.4, cosine 79. I get Z is 8 point, no, excuse me, 3 point, 3, oh my goodness gracious, my calculator just cleared. But I think it was 3.87. I think so. I could be a bit wrong. My calculator just cleared when I dropped it. Anyway, so now that we have Z, which is 3.87, or it's approximately 3.87, I can now use the law of cosine to find, uh, the law of sine to find X. So I'll do the law of sine over here because I'm running out of space. So in this case, I have Z, angle Z and Z. And I need to find x, so we're going to say, well, um, sine x over x is equal to sine z over z. Then I have x is going to be equal to the inverse function of sine z, which is, first I want to cross multiply actually, let me cross multiply, so the x will move to in front of the z, so x is then going to be, uh, this is capital X of course, not, not lowercase x, x is going to be equal to sine, inverse function of sine, x is 3.4, multiply sine of 79, over z, the z is what I just calculated, and this is going to give me, if I type this in on a calculator, what do I get? Okay, mm, let's see. Inverse function of sine, uh, fraction 3.4, multiply sine 79 over 3, 3.8. Nine. And I get 59 point, 59 point 59.59. So x is therefore approximately 59.95. Okay, so far so good. Let's, let's find more questions. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm running out of space. <laughs> okay, let's look at the final question. So they say write down the value of the gradient. So the function is given as y is equal to one half of x plus three. We know that if we compare this to our gradient intercept form, we know c is our y intercept and m is our gradient. So therefore, a is equal to one half, or in this case, it's going to be b. Whoops, see, problem with the question. So b is one half and therefore c will be three. Okay, so line 2 passes through the points 8, 1, and 0, 2. Calculate the gradient of line 2. Well, in this case, I want to say, we know my gradient is equal to delta y over delta x, or the change in y over the change in x, so I have 2 minus 1 over 0 minus 8. And that gives me negative 1 over 8. So determine if the line is parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Well, in this case, B's answer would be neither. Well, how do I know that? Because if I compare, let's compare the two slopes over here. If I compare 1 over 2 and negative 1 over 8. Well, in order for two lines to be, be parallel, they need to have the same gradient. And if lines are perpendicular, they usually have the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of this uh, slope or, or gradient would be negative 2. Right? So they neither. What about C? Well, C would say, write down the equation in both gradient intercept form. 
and ax plus by plus d okay let's do gradient intercept form um so if i look at these coordinates i have zero two so zero two indicates over here look 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 if i if i look over there i can see my y intercept my y intercept is 0 0.2 so we can just state the answer the answer would then be y is equal to negative 1 over 8 uh, x plus 2 but what if what if they didn't give us this what if well if they didn't give us this we can say we can take either one set of coordinates we can take the first set or the second set so this is my x this is my y i can therefore say 1 is equal to negative 1 over 8 times 8 plus c if i multiply i get negative 1 1 plus c and transfer over so 2 so c is therefore equal to 2 okay that's how i can find it what i did over here was i substituted a pair of coordinates and my gradient to calculate c okay okay and then for the final one write the equation in ax plus by plus d so i'm going to transfer everything to one side so i have if i transfer over set it equal to zero i have one over eight x plus y minus two is equal to zero and usually they might ask you to to put these questions in a positive or negative integer form if that is the case i'm going to multiply all of this with eight so i can get rid of this fraction so therefore if i do this i have eight over eight which is one one x plus 8y minus 16. So this would then be my final answer for, for C. Okay, so 2A is calculate the gradient, B is neither, and then C would be this and this. Okay, 